Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my dinosaur series. Last episode I talked about the reason why species like dromaeosaurids are more akin to birds than reptiles considering that they may have had feathers on their bodies. We also discussed how these raptors had sharp curved claws on their toes called talons on their feet similar to modern day predatory birds. Furthermore, I have explained how real velociraptors are very much different from the ones from Jurassic Park and how Deinonychus had other tactics than using speed and agility. So for this episode, now that I have recapped everything, I am going to be talking about a species of bird-hipped herbivorous dinosaurs known as ornithopods. The scientific term ornithopod refers to a group of herbivorous dinosaurs that started out as small two-legged running racers and increased in size and numbers before they became the most successful group of herbivores of the Cretaceous period. There are several subgroups of ornithopods such as Fabrosauridae, Heterodontosauridae, Isilobodontidae, Iguanodontidae, and Hadrosauridae. The term Hadrosauridae means sturdy lizard, but they are referred to as stuck-billed dinosaurs because they had bills that were mostly shaped like a duck's, but were not as sensitive as one at all. The two species of Vernethopod dinosaurs I will talk about for this episode are Iguanodon from the Iguanodontidae family and Parasaurolophus from the Hadrosauridae family. Let's start with Iguanodon, shall we? The dinosaur name Iguanodon means iguana tooth because its teeth were similar to a reptilian green iguana we see in modern day life. Unlike the modern day reptile, Iguanodon's teeth were flat and were made for chewing plants, proving that this dinosaur was a herbivore. Iguanodon was one of the first dinosaur species ever discovered around the world, with fossils that were located in Europe 1822. However, this species was not named until 1825 because the word dinosaur has not been invented yet until many years later, about in 1841. In fact, scientists have theorized Iguanodon to be a mythical reptile or a fantasy dragon. But when scientists reconstructed the skeleton, it turned out that the Iguanodon had a slightly longer neck, a bird-like beak, and longer limbs, standing it up to be 32 feet long and a weight of 3 tons, the size of a London bus, considering where this species came from. Iguanodon also had another distinctive feature on its hand, known as a thumb spike, and this thumb spike was often usually mistaken for a nose horn when this species was first discovered. The length of the Iguanodon's thumb was about 15 centimeters long, the length of a miniature book, and was used as a defense mechanism against predators like Neovenator, meaning New Hunter. An Iguanodon might have also used those spikes to eat green food from small leaves and small branches. Ornithopods like Iguanodons had superior locomotion. Even though they walk on four legs like most other herbivorous dinosaurs, it was a bipedal two-legged creature meaning it could run or stand on two legs. The word locomotion means how living things move, and it's often common in spider monkeys and other primates. Not all of you have known this, but Iguanodon was featured as Aladar from a Disney film in 2000 called Dinosaur, and it's been popular ever since, but halfway as popular as T-Rex from 1993's Jurassic Park. Okie dokie, now that you have learned everything about Iguanodon, it's time to move on to our next ornithopod dinosaur from the Hadrosauridae family known as Parasaurolophus. The scientific name Parasaurolophus means near crested lizard because of the long curved crest hanging from the back of its head. The crest was about 6 feet long, the size of a female African lion and was used for amplifying noises when it communicates with other Parasaurolophuses. This was because hadrosaurs, including Parasaurolophus, may have used echolocation to communicate with one another, and it's often common to how beluga whales use their nasal sacs near their blowhole to make high-frequency bellows, kind of like a song. Parasaurolophus was discovered in Alberta, Canada, and the United States 
and lived in the late Cretaceous period 75 million years ago. The skeleton of Parasaurolophus shows that this dinosaur was about 30 feet long and 2.7 tons, as big as a garbage truck. Parasaurolophus was a herbivore that lived near swamps and also may have been an adaptive swimmer, kind of like Spinosaurus from my sixth episode and even modern day marine iguanas. If you are wondering how the Parasaurolophus amplified noise through its crest like a song, well, he came to the right place. Its crest on top of its head was full of air cavities, similar to a musical instrument we know today as a trombone. It enables the dinosaur to produce trumpeting sounds compared to those of elephants, but with more of a musical frequency. Not all duck-billed dinosaurs had crests, but that doesn't mean they don't have a way to communicate with each other. All of them in common have a few main defenses against predators that try to attack them. Not only their noise-making machines, but also staying in the herd. And Parasaurolophus might have done the same to keep itself alive. However, smaller ornithopods, even when traveling in herds, have to run away from predators with their long legs. Well guys, that's about the end of this episode for my series. If you liked this video, please leave a like in comments down below and share it with everyone you love. And also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Next time on my dinosaur series, we will talk about a group of short-faced theropod carnivorous dinosaurs known as the Bellosaurids. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening. See ya!